Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Tariq Radio, ready to chop up some good game as we always do. Not gonna take no calls on today's show. We just gonna spit from the hip and the lip. So y'all let everybody know that we're on live right now. We're ready to make it do what it do. We're gonna take that real quick commercial break. So don't you move a muscle. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Tariq Radio. Yo, you still ain't getting women? Really? Come on, son. You need to go to badboymembership.com and step up your game. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game. And I'm telling you that if you really want to attract beautiful women, you need to go to badboymembership.com. This is where you get 45 through 90 minute step-by-step -step dating advice tutorials every month. Just sign up, follow the advice, and you'll get the woman you want. Go to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. What's up, family? If you make music and you're serious about your craft, then you need to go online and visit my friends over at LegendaryMix.com. They have the experience you need to get the job done right. With almost 20 years behind the boards, their expertise is unmatched. LegendaryMix.com delivers professional audio mixing and mastering for a great price and a fast turnaround time. As a bonus, sign up to the email list at LegendaryMix.com and receive a discount link and free music marketing ebook. So don't hesitate. Get started. Started right now, visit legendarymix.com or send a text to 347 565 5892 or shoot them an email at music at legendarymix.com. Are you looking for a 100% natural beard product that cleans the skin under your beard and it stimulates growth? Then check out Beard Tree Oil and Herbs LLC. They promote healthy beards over everything, they offer a full line of products, including beard and face wash, balm oil, mist, and detox. So treat yourself to the Beard Tree 3 package, which includes the wash, balm, oil for just $25. For best results, check out the Beard Tree 5 that includes all five products for just 50 bucks. So check this out all at BeardTreeOilAndHerbs.com. That's BeardTreeOilAndHerbs.com or follow them on Facebook and Instagram at beard tree oils and herbs attention parents and teachers are you tired of your children listening to music that glamorizes drug use and negative stereotypes if so check out gifted and lit gifted and lit is an award-winning educational program that uses hip-hop and mathematics science, self-esteem, and much, much more. This is a black-owned product that needs to be supported. Go to giftedandlit.com to order their program today. Remember, that's giftedandlit.com. Yo, are you a fan of personal development and self-help? Loving hip-hop? You love to listen to podcasts? Well, check out my man Poe at popolitikin.com. This was founded in 2008 Popolitikin is a self-help meets hip-hop brand, and with each interview, they teach the babies, and they share success secrets with you, the listener. Past guests of the show include Yo Gotti, Currency, MC Light, Dead Prez, Rashida, Gorgeous Dre, and so many more special people out there in the game. So Popolitikin has featured over 500 guests. Subscribe to his podcast on iTunes and listen to their most recent interview with rap -a founder Jay Prince and rapper Big Poo from Lil Brother. So check them out right now. Go to their website, popolitikin.com and follow them on social media at popolitikin. 
Yo, cupcake season is right around the corner, family, and you need to get your fragrance game all up in order. So you need to check out ashkicking.com. That's a black-owned business that sells all natural health and beauty products, and it also has fragrance products. You can get beauty products such as body butter, hair moisturizer, face moisturizer, unique incense burners, incense sticks, scented candles, and so much more. So again, you need to check out Ash Kickin, that's K-I-C-K-I-N dot com. The year is 2079. The futuristic nation of New Albion has been created to maintain a new racial apartheid system. There is a planned genocide that is going to target the nation's black population. A small group of black revolutionaries band together to launch guerrilla warfare attacks against their oppressors. Do they fail or do they succeed? Find out the answer by reading the book, Avoid the Machines, the new novel by author Scotty Vasco. Avoid the Machines, now available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. You are now tuning in to the king of games, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. I am delivered! Yes! What's up, family? We're here. We're back. Welcome back to Tariq Radio. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot to talk about on today's broadcast, but I'm glad y'all tuning in. Glad everybody got their North Sentinel Island University t-shirts, sweaters, and hoodies at HiddenColorsFilm.com. We're still working on Hidden Colors 5. That is coming soon. That one's going to be a monster. I can't wait till y'all see that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give some, some job opportunities out across the country. One thing I've been doing when I do my Instagram Live, and everybody should be following me, on Instagram. My Instagram is Tariq Elite for all my Instagram people. But when I'm on the gram, I, recently we started to chop up some game and let everybody know about people hiring in certain places around the country. Let me give you guys a few references. Let me give you a few references, guys all my people who are around the country. Uh, first of all, if you are in Chicago and or Milwaukee, let me give you my man Junius James number. Hold on. I'm doing all this while I'm talking. If you guys, I, it's my brother. He owns a job placement spot up there in the Chicago, Milwaukee area. His name is Junius James. His phone number is 414-234-2920. That's Chicago and Milwaukee. Now, a couple other places. Real quick, I'm going to get into some game. I'm just trying to get some of my folks employed. Um, who else can I? There's another brother out there in Houston. A brother named Nick Bryant. My folks out there in Houston, he works with different staffing agencies. He can get you hooked up. His phone number is 832-339-5287. All right? That's my folks in Houston for some job opportunities. My Ohio people, if you're in the Cleveland area, check out um, Premier Protective Services. My dude out there, they're looking for security guards, armed and unarmed. Give my man Terrence paying a call 216-972-0010 that's out there in Cleveland let me see where this one is this is another cat out here in the bay my brother has a moving company cats want to get some work being a mover check out my dude's page on Instagram actually um, heist underscore Wayne Omega. Got it? Heist underscore Wayne Omega. W A Y N E O M E G A. That's for my Oakland, San Francisco, Bay Area cats. 
I got another cat in Columbus, Ohio. He's looking for painters, people who paint in and inside houses. They do house paintings. Check out Chris Bernie, 614-679-9932. And we see who else we got. We got somebody in the D.C. area. Anybody in the D.C. area? They're looking for people who work in IT. They're hiring. Where's my man's number? Did my man put his number? My man didn't put his number, but I give you his email. Check out Kenneth Boyette. Email my brother. His email is kcboyette at yahoo.com. All right? There you go. Now, let me put a disclaimer. Contact all these people at your own risk. I'll say that. They should be good to go, but just in case, for my own disclaimer, because I really, I don't know the people personally, but these are listeners of the show, so contact them at your own risk or your own reward. Got it? All right. So just in case y'all meet one of these cats and they mack up on you, and then you'll be like, oh shit, Tariq introduced me to this motherfucker. So no, enter at your own risk. I'm, I'll put that out there just as a disclaimer. Hopefully everything goes good, but just in case... Leave my goddamn name out of it. All right, so what's going on, family? We're ready to chop it up. I I don't even know where to begin. There's so much stuff going on. You know, the, the other day, well, I think it was last night, a lot of people are talking about how R. Kelly was at a club in Chicago and everybody came out to see him. It was a club. It was packed. It was, you know, the people were supporting him out there in Chicago. And I just saw another article literally a few seconds ago saying that he's not going to be charged for giving some girl an STD. Remember, they were trying to charge R. Kelly for giving a girl an STD. So he's not going to be charged for that. So a lot of people are seeming a little confused. A lot of people are like, well, damn, we have this documentary about R. Kelly with a lot of damning information. And it seems like he's getting even more support. After the documentary, and and we talked about this, we've been talking about this for the last week or so, the Surviving R. Kelly documentary that came on the Lifetime channel had a lot of damaging and damning information in it. They were really going in on him. But after the documentary, his record sales shot up, his streaming shot up. All of his albums became like number one all on iTunes and Google Play. And a lot of people are like, damn, what the hell is going on? Why is this happening? Well, what what happened was the that show and the whole movement they tried to create around it, it kind of backfired. It backfired. And now, on a subconscious level, people look at him as being attacked because this whole special and the people around it, they weren't coming from a genuine place. This is the thing you got to understand about human nature. This whole thing kind of backfired on everybody. They're like, damn. The reason why, because... People did it and they tried to front and pretend and trick trick black people into believing that this was about helping the black girls. And they kept pushing that we're just trying to help the black girls narrative and people saw how phony that was. So this is the thing, people. Even if you attack somebody who has done something bad and R. Kelly has definitely done bad things, nobody's questioning that. But if you are equally or even more disingenuous, people are gonna turn on you because now you're gonna be looked at as somebody who's disingenuous and a hypocrite. And people don't like hypocrites too much. Shout out to Wayne Omega in the chat room. That's my brother right there, Wayne Omega. Y'all holler at my brother Wayne Omega in the chat room, all right? But like like I said, You can't come from a disingenuous place when you're attacking somebody. That's the thing. That's why people are so enamored when 
or so so happy when you see anonymous people like a lot of times i i expose a lot of these anonymous haters that you see on youtube i exposed one a few weeks ago and people are glad that that happened because they can see that some of these anonymous Negroes who are trying to expose folks and all this, they see that it's just coming from a place of hate and jealousy. So when you light one of them up, people are very happy about that. But the thing is, with the R. Kelly thing, it wasn't coming from a genuine place of concern for the black girls. Everybody saw it for what it was. It was just a smokescreen to provide cover to hide and protect all of these white predators. That's why it keeps backfiring. And the other day in Chicago, you had a whole bunch of white women with a couple of Negro lackeys. It was about 10 people. It wasn't that many people at all. They were outside in Chicago trying to protest outside of R. Kelly's studio, and that shit fell flat. People see it for what it is people are seeing and we're we've been helping to expose the white women who are really behind all this we can see that the white supremacist women are behind this and this is why it's backfiring because none of them are at liberty to sit up here and point the finger at nobody yeah we know r kelly's done some things but what we're not going to do intelligent black folks we're not going to jump on the bandwagon with you because you don't jump on the bandwagon with us. None of them are siding with us to attack all the white predators in Hollywood. They're just not doing it. So what they get, they get these sleeper cells who are in black society. And I'm gonna go real deep on these sleeper cells and where they come from. And again, I've been really thinking about doing a whole YouTube documentary like a mini doc on Shea Butter Twitter, who they are, the Shea Butter feminists, who they are, who they work for, who's funding them. Just do a real good expose on that. I've been really thinking about doing that and I might do that pretty soon. But they let these sleeper cell Negroes that they have working in their media companies facilitate a lot of the dirty work for them. And The fact that they're attacking R. Kelly and while they're attacking R. Kelly and they got us trying to attack R. Kelly, the Golden Globes the other night gave a Golden Globe award to a movie called The The Bohemian, The Bohemian Rhapsody. I think that's the name of the movie. And the director of that movie is Brian Singer. And Brian Singer has been accused by a bunch of people for rape and pedophilia. And the white media they're keeping quiet about that. They're real low key about that. They're staying on code. At the same time, we're attacking R. Kelly and I'm talking about what has happened within the last week. With R. Kelly, they're bringing up stuff from 20 years ago and 15 years ago and all that. I'm talking about what happened in the last week with these white predators. Within the last week, Kevin Spacey has gone to jail Within the last 24 hours, while we're yelling about R. Kelly, do you know they dropped another one of Harvey Weinstein's cases? They just dismissed another Harvey Weinstein case yesterday. One of these A-list white actors, actresses, she filed a claim and they threw that shit right out. They quietly threw it out. See, this whole R. Kelly thing, it was a big old giant smoke screen. And that's why we got to understand how to be on code. With the white supremacists, even if one of them are wrong, they know how to stay on code with that person and keep their mouths shut. They know how not to join in with us against another white person. We got to learn how to get that code. They don't use us to take another white person down. It was Ashley Judd. Thank you in the chat room. It was Ashley Judd. They stay on code with each other majorly. I really want y'all to understand that. And speaking of code, there's a guy out here in Los Angeles, Ed Buck. He's a big 
Democratic donor. He's a wealthy white man who donates a lot of money to Democratic candidates. He's an LBGT guy. This guy has a fetish for black men and two black men has died in his apartment within 18 months. Today, they just released the name of the second victim. Let me find that. I just saw something just a few seconds ago. They just released the name of the second victim. And let me see if I can find it real quickly, family. Y'all bear with me. Let me see if I can find that name. Okay, the the person's name is Timothy Dean. That's the black man who died at Ed Buck's home the other day. I'm, I'm reading this story for the first time on the AP. It says, second man who died in Southern California at the home of Democratic donor in less than two years has been identified. The coroner's office said 55-year-old Timothy Dean of West Hollywood was pronounced dead on Monday. They said the investigation will include a cause of death. So they're still not naming what the cause of death is. We're waiting on them to say what the cause of death is. But the thing is, Ed Buck has not even been arrested. Do you guys know, and another black man died 18 months ago, same way, this young black man, people are calling him a prostitute. And I, I don't like that, calling these, because these are gay black men that this guy picked up on. They're calling them prostitutes. And I don't like that shit. Probably some random brothers he met at the club and they were just getting money out of them. But to say that they were prostitutes, meaning like it sounds like they were just standing on the corner. That's not the case. That's a way to disparage the victims. I want y'all to understand that. When they say, yeah, some prostitutes got killed, that means that that's a way of saying their lives ain't worth shit. You watch the language that the white media will use when it comes to us. You know, they'll say they're a prostitute, a male escort. Or, watch these little words that they use. Those words are used to somewhat dehumanize and also criminalize the victims. That's a way to criminalize the victims to make it seem like, okay, they were already criminals anyway and criminals you know whatever happens to criminals they deserve what they get so watch these words so with Ed Buck a lot of people and I, I did a live stream the other day you got a lot of people in the black LGB community a lot of black people they know about this guy his his reputation is known in the black gay community and people are known to say hey he's the weirdo you gotta stay away from this guy this guy's he's bad news so the word is the word is on, on the streets the world is out about this guy so what he does from several sources they say he go to clubs and he, he gets these black dudes gets them to his house and he gives them date rape drugs and this is what several people have said certain other survivors have said the same thing there was another brother who's been giving interviews lately. He talked about how he went in there and he showed pictures of you know, drug paraphernalia. The guy likes them to dress up and get into role play and slave play. And then he likes to inject them with all types of shit. And just imagine, nobody's arresting this guy. And, and let me talk to my LGBT brothers out here, brothers, black men. And, and I talked about how these freaky white supremacist males, these are the ones who are giving all types of diseases to black folks. This is where we get this shit from. Y'all go lay up with these crazy fucking freaks. And they're doing all types of shit to you, tying you up, injecting you, and then you come back into the community with that shit. They're the ones giving you that. And the word is, this Ed Buck guy, he drugs people, this is allegedly, drugs people without their permission and then injects them with all types of different drugs and nobody's touching this guy and this is a wealthy guy and I I, I want to put my tinfoil hat on because I've heard he's been doing this to just dozens and dozens and dozens of brothers 
man, is this some kind of... I almost want to believe this is on some CIA social experiment, silent weapons with quiet wars. It, it really sounds more sinister than we might believe, to be honest. It might be even more sinister that he's allowed to get away with this and they won't touch him because he has connections on the higher up level. He done fucked around and gotten some people killed too fast on some experimental things. What is he injecting folks with? I, yeah, I'm, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on. Is this some organ harvesting shit? Because no telling what he's doing. He's getting these gay brothers from these clubs. And if these brothers, they understand that a lot of these cats might not have ties with their family like that. So if these guys are missing, nobody will really trip. So is this guy, I don't know, man. He'll drug them up, send them on out there in the community, whatever. These guys fall out somewhere. They, sco they scoop them up, get them organs. I don't know. Maybe it was some shit that went wrong in his house and they died too fast. It's some real funny style shit going on with Ed Buck. It's, and I want to know who all is tied in with it, why they're protecting this dude so much. And yes, I got my tinfoil hat on. Something ain't right. With the city, if they're letting this dude, if he's that connected, and they letting this dude just have people dying over and over in his house, you know the odds of somebody dying in your house, how rare that is, but the odds of them dying in your house twice, that's literally lightning strike striking twice. That's literally lightning striking twice. Yeah, he's all tied in with the Clintons and all that. And this is something that we're going to have to holler at. When they start pandering for our vote and start talking all that we need to be allies with the LGBT community, no. This is why I always tell people there is no such thing as intersectionality. The white LBGT community practices the same white supremacy and let me man did y'all see the statement that the white lgbt community put out the los angeles lgb center lgbt center they responded to the death of the man found in the home of ed buck and let me show you guys how they get the hell on code the white community who believes in white supremacy straight and gay Whatever religious background, they all stay on the same code. This is the press release they put out. They said, the LGB Center calls upon Los Angeles Sheriff and his department to fully investigate this tragedy. Look at their words. And aggressively seek justice wherever the inf information might lead. Look at that language. It's not accusatory. Look at their language. Their language is not accusatory at all. It's real vague. It's all up in the air. You see how they started it off? This tragedy. Not suspected murder. It's a tragedy. See, with Kevin Hart, it's homophobia. Kevin Hart, you said you said a joke, so you need to apologize for your homophobia. It's not it's not, nothing vague. No, we're going to make you responsible for your homo. You, 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 they know how to make somebody responsible and they know how to be evasive. And right now they're being evasive. So it goes on to say, although the investigation is in its early stages, we urge the public to keep, we, we urge the sheriff to keep the public informed as LGB people, we have a considerate, a considerable and urgent interest in the case so it's clearly linked to the health and safety of our community. What, what are they talking about? The health and safety of their community. What, what, what are they talking about? That's them trying to spin the narrative. You see that? That is them trying to spin the narrative. Let me go on read further. While much is still to be learned, it appears that this tragedy is linked to substance abuse. 
LGTB people and other marginalized groups are at elevated risk for impacts that result from the current ec epidemic use of opioids, methamphetamines, and other dangerous drugs. If y'all don't get the fuck out of here, you see that slick shit? You see the Jedi mind trick they just pulled? They're trying to frame this into a drug overdose thing as if the brothers who died in here, they just happened to, dry, to die over drug overdoses. And it's really a drug problem, not this dude out here targeting people and drugging them, not to a potential serial killer. This dude is a, a potential serial killer. So that just shows how they get on cold with each other. See, while we're running around trying to show out in front of them, yelling about R. Kelly, yeah, if R. Kelly did whatever he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to have to stop jumping up in their lap trying to show out and make noise and take shots at R. Kelly. We're going to take shots at R. Kelly. We need to do that among ourselves because they stay on code. We got to stop tap dancing for butter biscuits. And also, we're going to have to let them know. If y'all letting the Harvey Weinsteins get off and the Ed Bucks get off and the Brian Singers get off and y'all are keeping quiet, well, we don't keep quiet. Don't come around us with the bullshit. Because right now, again, they're skipping over all the hundreds of people, all the white predator predators in Hollywood, and they got a documentary coming out about Michael Jackson pretty soon. They just announced there's a documentary where they're accusing Michael Jackson of pedophilia. So they're going to be doing the same thing like they did with this R. Kelly thing. They're going to get their Shea Butter Negroes to, to hide behind so they can throw shots at Michael while they're premiering this thing. So their whole thing is making black people the face of sexual harassment because it's too many white males getting caught out there and they cannot make white men the face of it. They cannot make white men the face of it. I played a clip, I put a clip on my social media earlier of Corey Feldman. This was back in 2014, he was on The View. Barbara Walters was on there too. And I want y'all to listen to this very closely. I want y'all to listen how these white supremacists stay on code. Now Corey Feldman, He's up here talking about all the pedophiles in the industry. And I want y'all to listen to Barbara Walters. See, Barbara Walters reprimanded him for getting off code. I really want y'all to see how on code uh, Barbara Corey, Walters is. Listen I'm to I'm saying this. that there are people that were the people that did this to both me and Corey yeah. that are still working, they're still out there, and they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And they, are and they do not want me saying what I'm saying right now. Are you saying that they're pedophiles? Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. So that's, that's Barbara Walters acting dumb. Are you saying they're pedophiles? And they're still in the business? That's Barbara Walters. And I wish y'all could see Barbara Walters' face. She's looking all flustered and all grieved, like, oh my God, why are you saying this? Okay. Hold on. Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. That's what yeah, and that's what you were saying wow. in your book. When you that's talk you to talk about, yeah. When yes. you talk to I mean, And that's um what's her name? Is that Sherry Shepard? She's talking. There's a couple of people on the couch. There's Barbara Walter, some other person, Sherry Shepard, the sister is on the other side of Corey Feldman talking. Hold on. They want me here right now. Trust Corey, me. They there, want me dead. there are a lot of parents out here yeah. who want to put their kids in this in this business. They, their kids are cute, they're great actors, da da da. What would you say to a parent who just has the best of intentions who's coming here with their child? Mm -hmm. um, if you're saying that there's a lot of predators in this industry. It's a many feathered bird, okay? Be careful what you wish for. That's what I'll tell you. You know, don't go into it with naivety. Don't go into it thinking that it's all roses and you're sunglasses and an entire industry. I'm sorry, I'm not trying you said to. That Boy, did y'all catch that? Did you catch what Barbara Walters just said? Barbara Walters looked at him in the eye and said, you're damaging an entire industry industry you understand catch what she said she she basically said motherfucker you getting off code and you fucking it up for everybody she wasn't all that all the girls and all, all that fake because it's fake they don't give a fuck about that. that that's just collateral damage they let them white supremacist males do whatever 
But catch that. She ain't on there with all that fake bullshit. She's like, you damaging the industry, meaning our money. You know, don't go into it with naivety. Don't go Listen into it, to it again. It's all roses and You're sunglasses. You're damaging and an entire industry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. That... I'm just trying to say that it's a very important, serious topic. You said that there was one gentleman in the industry who did not take advantage of you. He was not a pedophile. That's you said right. it was Michael Jackson. Of all people. Catch that? Now, he said Michael didn't do nothing to him. Now, but they got this documentary trying to throw Michael under the bus out of all people. But I wanted y'all to catch that. Y'all heard Barbara Walters said it on television. She G-checked him like, why are you getting off code like this? You ain't supposed to tell on other white people. That's what she was saying. Yeah, Barbara's been in the game for a minute. Well, she's an old bird. She's been in the game for a long time. So Barbara's clicked in. Oh, Barbara's all clicked in. You ain't supposed to tell on her cronies. So Barbara's been, Barbara's been on the top. She's been in some of those meetings and she's been hearing some whispers and rumblings about all these pedophilia claims. So she's like, hey, get your ass on code. You ain't, you gonna, you gonna mess this whole industry up doing what you doing. You ain't supposed to be telling. See, that's how they are. They make each other get on code. You are not supposed to be telling on each other. You don't tell on other white people. We supposed to get out here and throw Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, um, AJ from 106 and Park, Todd Bridges. We can throw all, every nigga we can find, we can throw them under the bus. But damn it, don't you throw other white men under the bus. And the thing is with Corey Feldman, Corey's trying to get him some money. Corey's trying to get some money. He's trying to, that's why he he keeps dangling those names over people's heads like, okay, y'all need to keep paying me off. Somebody need to give me some paper. You ding? That's what Corey's whole thing is. It's not like he, you know, and, you know, I, I believe he was molested now. Let's be very clear. But, you know, they're just trying. Corey's trying to get him some money. He's trying to get some of that hush money. But the thing is, in white supremacist society, you're not supposed to get off code. They don't play that game. And by the way. A couple of years after this interview, y'all remember Corey Feldman got stabbed. Some random people ran up on him and stabbed him. Y'all remember that? I think this happened about a year ago, as a matter of fact. He was he was somewhere, and somebody, three people ran up to his car, opened the car door, and stabbed him right on up. He had to go to the hospital. They didn't kill him, but he said, I believe people are after me because of this, me talking about pedophilia. So they already tried to off him. Look that up. They stabbed the fuck out of him. He talking too much. That's why Barbara's telling them, hey, man, you, you kind of talking too much. You running your mouth a little bit too much. You see how they get down with each other? They stay on code heavy. Yeah, you get reprimanded if you get off code. See, the white supremacist game... The name of the game is always supposed to be hide and deny. You're supposed to hide shit and deny it. And you do your dirt in private. You do your dirt within closed circles. You're not supposed to broadcast your shit and you're not supposed to be exposed. But these people are so sloppy now, they're getting exposed left and right. And with the white women starting to expose a lot of these white supremacists, predators some of these white women wanted their money that was the problem some of these white women weren't getting the money and the movie roles they wanted to get so they started doing some mass snitching so they're getting all that in order and they're this is why they keep trying to put black faces on the whole me too movement to kind of change that energy around but even in politics you can't really get too far off code You'll get reprimanded like Representative Steve King. He was trending earlier today. He's a representative over there in Iowa. And for years, Steve King, if you go to my Twitter, I've been exposing his racism since 2016. Steve King has always said slick ass racist shit, but he would always codify it. He would always talk in codes. 
and I would expose that shit all the time. You go check out my tweets from 2016, 17, 18, just uh, everything. He's always said these little coded racial things. He would always talk about Western culture and Western civilization, little code words that mean white supremacy. So for years, he's been spewing his white supremacist rhetoric and the media knows about it. They know what it is. They know his connections. They know that he's a white supremacist. They've always known this. But he always kept it coded up. Well, today, they started going in on him because he started just getting off code and calling it what it is. He did an article with, uh, was it the New York Times? One of those major outlets. And he said, basically, why did we make white nationalism and white supremacy, why do we make those words negative? What's wrong with it? So now he's openly, he openly tried to claim the words because he's tired of talking in code. He got comfortable. He's like, shit, I've been getting away with saying all this sick, this slick shit for so long. Let me just go on and say it. Hell, that's what white supremacy is supposed to be. We're supposed to be outright bold with it. So he was like, hey, what's wrong with white supremacy? What's wrong with a little white nationalism? And then all of them start turning on his ass. Even the white supremacist suspects like Ben Shapiro, all of them are turning on him now. Oh, oops. It's time to get him out of here. They're like, "Uh uh-oh. Oops. So now they're trying to turn on him to transfer him. They ain't going to fire him, but they're just going to transfer him. You dig? So you got to understand the game they play. They don't mind racism. They don't even mind pedophilia. They just want you to be on code about it. That's the name of the game with them. And black folks, you got to understand, y'all think that you're going to get in good with these white supremacists and throw other black folks under the bus. They're going to turn on you at the drop of a hat. And that dude, Torre, he learned that the hard way. Now, on that Surviving R. Kelly show, Torre was one of the main people in there talking about these interviews he did with R. Kelly and how much of a predator R. Kelly is and he's so surprised that black folks supported him so long and predator this and all Torrey was going in. And Torrey has been a funny style dude for a long time. You know, Torrey has came at me sideways with some fuck shit. He called me homophobic because I was calling out the roots anti-straight male agenda so he tweeted some shit well why you so homophobic? He's one of them. He's real fuck nigga. So, Torrey is all in this documentary talking about predatory behavior and all this so shit. And what's interesting, a lot of these people connected to the documentary, so many things are being exposed about them. Dream Hampton, she just blocked me the other day because I I posted up interviews that she did with R. Kelly. Glowing interviews because she's one of these people talking about, oh, we got to do something about this rape culture. Why did R. Kelly, why was he able to thrive so long and who enabled them, and I'm pulling up her articles that she wrote on this son of a bitch. She was the one of the ones supporting him. So she blocked me because we, we didn't brought too many receipts on our ass. And, you know, a lot of people are being called out, people who are on that special, people are calling out their behavior. But now Tore, a white female makeup artist, has accused him of sexual harassment. And what's ironic, Ebony put the story out first today. It was Ebony that put the story out today. He was working up there at Time somewhere, Time Warner, ABC, one of them places, and he would make all these sexual remarks to this white woman, talking about he wanted to do anal with her and he wanted to come on her face and all this old shit. And real graphic stuff. And, yo, he was really on this white woman talking about, oh, he want to do anal. And I mean, he was real graphic with this white woman. So she put his business out there. Now, I was going I was going to break the story yesterday. I had the information. I, I said, I'm not going to do that because I don't really like him. But I'm like, I'm not going to do that because I had all this information yesterday. Yeah, I knew this was going to eventually come out. I didn't know it was going to come out this fast. And I didn't know Ebony was going to not Ebony, but Essence. I didn't know they were going to put it out. But I had all this information yesterday and I was just, I said, like, eh, I ain't gonna put this out. Let me stay on code because it is a white lady. I don't, one of my codes is I don't like to 
align myself with white people against another black person, even if I don't like the black person. I, that's that's part of my code. I, they think like that, so I think like that. That's why I didn't put it out. That's why I didn't put it out. I had all this information yesterday because I, I was corresponding with the woman on um, Instagram. We were corresponding back and forth privately. So she was telling me things that I already knew. Now, it was a one thing, shit, when... I found out that this motherfucker was allegedly harassing a woman. That made me a little skeptical. I'm like, really? (laughs) I'm going to need some receipts. (laughs) That nigga like pussy? You know, all this talk talk about anal. I'm like, wait, you sure he didn't want that done to him? I mean, come on. I need some receipts here. Shit. But I didn't. I said, I ain't going to put that out. I ain't going to put it out. I, and I, I was gonna be like, shit, if somebody bury it, that's cool. But I wasn't gonna put it out. Because I, I just, that, nah. No, I wasn't gonna put that out. But it's ironic that F- Essence put it out because these are the, the Shea Butter people that he's already clicked up with and they turned on him. That's, that's interesting. And if I had to put it out, people would have been looking at me as a bully anyway because I've been on everybody's ass. And, uh, I've been on all these other Shea Butters I've been on their necks. So, you know, I don't want to be looked at as a bully. You dig? But with the Torrey thing, you know, he's cupcaking, trying to cupcake with this white woman. They're flipping on niggas. Like, none of y'all is safe. Nobody's safe. And the thing about Torrey, Torrey has been on some fuck shit for a long time. Going back to the 90s, you know, Torrey, he was the dude working. He, he's always worked for these major corporations. Somebody said he bragged about writing an article or putting out an article that ended the career of Public Enemy or some shit like that. And also, he was the one who was writing a lot of negative stories about Tupac when Tupac was going to trial. They had Ture putting a lot of that negative shit out there. They were hiding behind him to write a lot of slanderous stuff about Tupac, and that helped get him convicted. You understand, you putting all this shit out, jurors are going to see this shit. They're sequestered, but they somebody's going to give them some information. So remember, it was Ture putting out a lot of shit about Tupac and a lot of damaging propaganda that eventually help get Tupac locked up. So Torrey has been on some shit for a minute. Some people say that he's connected to the feds. I don't know. that Those are rumors. I do know that the Bloods almost fucked him up out here. He came out to LA. He went up to the death row and he said something slick. He was interviewing Sugar, somebody. He said something slick and then Pyrus hemmed his ass up. So, you know, he's that type of dude. You dig? He's that type of dude. But we got to understand he's one of those sleeper cell type of cats that's lurking in our community. You know, his mother's white. Teray has was raised by a white woman. So he thought since he was raised by a white woman, he grew up around a white woman. He can be comfortable saying what he wanted to say around a white woman because he kind of think he's an, an honorary white person. You dig? And he got that nigga wake up call. Ture. Somebody in the chat room is like, how do, pronounce, how do you spell his name? Everybody in the chat room, let him know how to spell that dude's name. Now, we got to understand, speaking of sleeper cells, how they get certain black folks. <clears throat> inside black society to lay dormant and then undermine black society at a certain time. They do it in certain ways. They get these Negroes who grew up with one white parent like a Torre. They get some studs. They get some queens within black society who felt like they've been marginalized by other black people. They weren't accepted by black people. So white supremacists will use them and use their black community hatred against us. 
They'll prop them niggas up. <clears throat> Somebody said, like Obama, absolutely. And also, they'll go adopt people from Africa, places like that. And I've been talking a lot about how a lot of African immigrants come over here and they're vetted to be coons. A lot of them are vetted to be coons. It's the slave trade all over again. The slave trade never stops. We don't understand the severity of the psychological torture that a lot of African adoptees and immigrants get when they come over here and get with the white supremacists or get around them. We don't really understand how deep it is. If you want to get an idea, just look at Charlize Theron and that boy she dresses up as a girl. That gives you an idea. Now, this is an A-list actress doing this type of shit. Do you imagine, can you imagine what goes on to people who are not A-list actresses, people you don't know? The shit that goes on when they adopt these black children? Can y'all imagine? This is a story. Let me play something for you guys. This happened 2010, like nine years ago, in Paradise, California. You know, I've told you guys about Paradise, California. That racist ass place. It's an all white town up there in Northern California. They ran all the black folks out. They've been doing slick racist shit there for decades. Paradise, California. I've talked about that before. About 10 years ago, it was a white couple, white supremacist couple, who adopted some girls. They got them from Liberia. They adopted these children. And listen to this. The small town of Paradise, California, where these children lived with their parents in a fundamentalist Christian home. For the nine children, life in paradise was anything but. We cover up eight of their faces because they are the survivors. Survivors of a violent form of discipline practiced by their parents, Kevin and Elizabeth Schatz. The one face not covered is their seven-year-old adopted daughter, Lydia. She was killed by her parents. The black girl. Mike Ramsey is the district attorney of Butte County in Northern California. We've heard of, you know, the the phrase death by a thousand lashes. Uh, That's basically what this was. Okay, uh, that's only so much I can play at that. But they beat the little, they, they beat all little black kids and beat the little girl to death in fundamentalist Christian home. Ain't no, these, understand, the only religion they practice is white supremacy. That's all they practice. They hide it behind other religions. But they got this little seven-year-old black girl and beat her to damn death. You understand? Now this happened in paradise, and I've been warning y'all and telling people about paradise California for years. This is the type of shit that went on up there. Just demonic. And by the way, remember a couple of months ago the entire town of Paradise burned the fuck down during the wildfires out here. The entire town burnt down. You understand? This was a couple of months ago. That ain't none but Ogun. The entire town burnt down? I mean, to ashes. They're out there investigating now. Ain't nothing left out there in paradise. Paradise is Ashadice. Come on, y'all. You who? It's a celebration. Oh, shit. Ain't nothing out there in paradise. You who? Oh, that evil mayonnaise spirit. Just mayonnaise jars. Burnt up mayonnaise jars all over the place. Come on, Ogun, won't he do it? Raise it up for Ogun. We gotta make a joyful noise for Ogun. Won't he do it? Come on now. Going on, Ogun. Won't Ogun do it? That ain't nothing but Ogun. Oh man, with a little Shango, with a little Papa Legby in there. Come on with it. Party with you, come on. <laughs> Hell yeah, the whole town burnt down. Boy, you tell me karma ain't real. You tell me karma ain't real. The demonic shit they had going on in that town. Man, the fire skipped all over all these other places and burned that whole town to the ground. Good riddance. 
Anyway, I digress. But but let me go back to talking about these these sleeper cells that the white supremacists create. There was a story that came out today in the fundamental no, was the Federalist, the Federalist um, website, and it was about one of the white writers. Her name is Jenny White, and she adopted some black kids. And let me read this article. And if you're looking at the screen, this is her and the adopted kids. And I think that's her husband in the picture. And the article says, the worst racism my children have experienced came from black peers. So right there, you know it's about to be some bullshit. Now it says, in December, Mackenzie Adams, a fourth grader from... Jones Elementary School in Alabama despondent after relentless taunting by other black children for her relationship with a white child hanged herself in her family home. Although suicides resulting from school bullying have sadly risen steadily over the years, her death spoke to me on a personal level. Now, she's just going to skip over all these other black kids who get taunted and, and bullied by white kids on a regular basis, okay? You see that? You see how on cold they are? They don't criticize the white kids who do this. White kids sit around calling black kids nigga all damn day. Do you know how much you have to cherry pick that? Do you know how much you have to cherry pick that? So, she got this one case talking about the little girl who hung herself, which I really don't believe, to be honest. Which I don't believe, to be honest. Which I don't believe, to be honest. How do a, a kid know to hang them fucking selves? That's some shit. Kids don't know no, nothing about no hanging themselves. So, I don't believe that bullshit. But... She said, the article goes on, in summer 2005, while visiting my grandparents in the Northeast, my husband and I met up with my cousin, a teacher, and his new wife, who he'd met while teaching in Zambia. In recounting this story, Justina told us of a very recent death of her sister and how her 21-year-old nephew was struggling to feed and care for the five siblings. So I guess the wife was white. After much soul searching and discussion, my husband and I approached Brian and offered to adopt the two youngest sisters, who were two and six at the time. He graciously agreed, and in 2007, after two adopt two year adoption processes, um, we flew to Zambia to bring home our daughters, Barbara and Betty. We knew that adopting two little girls, four and nine. Now, by now, this this was in 2007, so the nine year olds should be. Um, 20 something right now so she should be in her early 20s so the 9 year old girl is probably grown now well, is grown now so the first time it happened I was floored one day that first summer after we adopted our daughters while out shopping we ran into one of our associate pastors our church had provided amazing support during our adoption struggle so I was greatly pleased to stop and visit with the lady. As we chatted before we left the store, the pastor, a black woman, suddenly lowered her voice, became somber, and inquired as to how I was immersing the girls in their culture. I truly wasn't sure what she meant, so I asked. She began to sermonize about how important it is for me to get the girls subscription to black magazines and to make sure they watch black movies and TV shows so that they could see and relate to people of color. She assured me that as a white woman, I couldn't be expected to understand the black experience in America. I needed to be sure that I make appropriate and relevant material available so that they can assimilate into black culture. As a staunch believer in the dream of Martin Luther King, this pastor's words didn't sit well with me. In fact, I knew for certain her guidance was rearing my children. For rear, her guidance for rearing my children was at best perpendicular to his vision. MLK advocated against bitterness and hatred in the black community. 
because his ultimate goal was that little black boys and little black girls were able to be joining hands with little white girls and little white boys. Okay, let me stop there for a minute because I'm getting sick with this woman's bullshit already. Oh God, I hate when they start bringing up Dr. King. When, whenever these white supremacists bring up Dr. King, you know the bullshit is coming. Oh, when they bring up Dr. King, the BS is right behind it. Because the black lady was right. The black lady knew what was up. That black mother, that black lady, she knew. She was trying to do a wellness check for them kids. That sister knew. And let me tell you something, that's why they don't like, those white supremacists, they don't like having those adopted kids around black folks at all. The last thing they wanna do is have them read black books. That's the last thing they want them to do. They never ever want black kids that they adopt around other black folks. That's why they homeschool them. They never, never, never want them around black. And that defeats the purpose. That's why whenever y'all see them, these white people adopting, with these adopted black kids, the kids' hair all fucked up all over their head. You can tell they ain't been around no black folks. There's a reason why they don't want them around black folks. How are you gonna indoctrinate them when you got some brothers over here teaching them some game? That's the last thing you want. You don't want no revolutionary in your house. You get them fucking around with somebody like me, you gonna go home and rob their ass. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You don't want them coming home with a Hidden Colors DVD and then they looking at your ass side-eyed? You did, you want, you you trying to raise some good coons. So let me read the rest of it. I will never forget the heat rising in my face. I must have stared at her as though she had grown two heads in front of me. It actually angered me that instead of focusing on the girl's adoption, to a completely new country and their lives as Americans, this woman chose to hone in on racial politics, especially a pastor. When I finally composed myself, well, let me stop, let me stop with the, so now this white woman is just, just so offended. Oh, so, oh, I'm just so offended that you're gonna focus on race. Oh, I'm just so angered, how dare you focus on race? Oh God. It goes on to say, when I finally composed myself, I offered my thanks, but explained that our family really didn't see color. So we had no intention of raising any kids in our family to be anything other than Americans. Hence, we probably shouldn't be comfortable taking that kind of suggestion. Discontent with my answer and intent upon pressing her point, she continued. She believed my thought process was unfortunate because of my whiteness and I couldn't process the fact that these girls' fate would always balance the pentacle of somebody else's prejudicial small-mindedness. It was up to me to make them vigilant of the discrimination that would surely come their way. Unable to continue the conversation any longer, I told her we need to get going. We said our goodbyes and we exited and fumed all the way home. Let me stop there. So this black woman ran up on her and told the damn truth. This black woman told her the truth, but now she, she puts her extra bullshit on it. But the sister told her the truth. And all that, when they talk that, oh, I don't see color bullshit, you know, that, oh God, that, that's all of their jive ass talking points. Let me read the rest. Now, my kids identify as American. Here she go with Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. was no separatist, no racist. He was a uniter with a vision to bring people together. I still struggle to see how in the world the words of my long former pastor matched up with the dream of one of the greatest men of history. Why in the world would I raise my girls to look for specters in the shadow? Why would I raise them to identify with a specific race if being members of the human race weren't enough? Oh Lord, this lady's so full of shit. Oh my God. Oh, this lady's so full of shit. This is coon rearing right here, all right? Notice when you talk to coons, don't they be talking this same shit? 
They're, this is coon prepping right now. When you talk to a coon, they be talking that, well, I'm not black, I is American. There's only one race, there ain't nothing but the human race. That's coon talking, that's where they get it from. All lives matter. Hold on, let me read the rest. Yes, my daughters are from Africa and they communicate with their family there regularly, but once we adopted them and they landed in America together, they became Americans, not African Americans, not black girls, but girls who would grow up in a nation where they were afforded the opportunity to become anything they wanted. To my daughters, today my daughters are 21 and 16. We have raised them and our other three children in our philosophy, yet it somehow continuously shocked me that any real racism they've encountered. Hold on, well, let me let me slow down on that one. Hold on, let me slow down on this one. Today, my daughters are 21 and 16, and we have raised them and our other three children, the other three kids are white, by the way, on this philosophy, yet it somehow continuously shocks me that any real racism that my daughters have encountered comes from black people. Oh. White supremacy never exists to them. They, they never point out white supremacy, but the real racism is the black folks. It's the black folks who who's racist to my daughters though. The racism that they see is from my, the, their black contemporaries. That's where the racism is. Let me read this. Although the 21 year old had some difficult emotional struggles and returned to Africa to live with her brother to finish school, she came back to Oklahoma after graduation, joined the National Guard and began college with the intention of becoming a nurse. Hold on, wait. Now you see how that white supremacist female glanced over that part? You see how she glanced over? Well, she had some emotional, difficult emotional struggle. Somebody must have been molesting that girl. That sounds like they always kind of low key breeze over their bullshit. It's the real racism, that's from the black folks. Now my daughter, she, she did have some emotional issues and she had to leave and go back and, but she can't see. So no telling what happened with that child then. So it goes on to say, education has always been important to Barbara, who always been a hard worker and dissatisfied with anything less than an A in her class. All of my kids, she and my oldest son, seem to share an innately conservative bend. Uh and tend to be reserved in public. So that means they're Republicans. One day we were talking in the kitchen after she returned home from school where she struggled with the constant racial politics in her college English class. She wanted help beginning her last paper regarding disproportionate brutality by police towards African-Americans. She recounted her frustration that so many black contemporaries in the military had razzed her because her last name is white and she's been adopted by a white family. When I asked her how she dealt with that kind of thing, she's just shr she shrugged it off and said, hey, what are you gonna do? Thank God she's a strong woman. Her answer could have been suicide. Bitch, okay. <laughs> if this white lady don't fucking stop, somebody made a joke, hey, why your name white? I don't know. So now the, the white mama talking about, oh, she lucky she didn't commit suicide. That's the racism right there. That's that's the black racism right there. Some black folks were kind of making jokes about why she has a white sounding last name, which clearly somebody was just joking with her. But the, the, the white adopted mama had to really put some extras on it. Oh, I'm, I'm just glad she didn't she didn't kill herself. I, I'm, I'm just so glad she didn't hang herself over that that black racism. This just shows how just irrational and illogical these white supremacists are. But let me read the rest. Okay. It goes on to say, racism isn't okay if you're black. Betty is my straightforward social butterfly. Although she and the two boys have been homeschooled since 2012, she participated in 
no end of cur- extracurricular activity, knows no strangers, has no qualms about providing her opinions to anything, to anyone at any time. Currently, she's a manager on the local homeschool football team. She also nannies and runs her own photography business. So they got her as a mammy somewhere. It goes on to say, the other night she came home from practice and told us that one of the black boys on the team who constantly makes racial comments called another black boy the N-word. Characteristically, Betty told him not to use that word because it's disgusting. And then he said, what do you mean? You're an N-word too. She told him she was in no way an N-word, yet he, uh, he was apparently intent on convincing her she was. His next retort was something like, hey, we're both from Africa. She looked him right in the face and said, I'm sure with her hilariously sharp attitude and little head bob for good measure, I'm from Africa, you're from Oklahoma, I'm no N-word. Wow. That's what the daughter said. So this is the racism. The, the dudes was like, hey, nigga, what's up, my nigga? It was that type of shit. They were having a Campbell, can't, a casual conversation. And this daughter is already a coon. They've, they've already turned her into a coon. She's a full, the, the, the adopted daughter is full coon now. And she's getting the coonery from her, her mom. Her mom is implanting the coonery in her. Let me read the rest. But the, the, the part where it says she, I'm from Africa, you from Oklahoma. So they, there's always already that division. There's already that division there that the white supremacists put in there. Now she goes on, it, the, the, the article goes on to say, my daughter went on to tell us that this kid also mocked her about hanging around black kids, including my daughter's white boyfriend, who is also on the team. Let me stop right there. She's already a coon bed wench. They already created them a little bed wench. The daughter has already got a white boyfriend out here reprimanding other black folks, wagging her finger. She's a bed wench already. They've, they've created a little bed wench. They got her. She's nice and gone. She's a... a full bed wench now let me read the rest the boyfriend my daughter's white boyfriend who's also on the team they the other kids mocked her about speaking like she's white again if betty hasn't hadn't had a strong personality this kind of thing of ridiculing behavior for from somebody who looks like her what could it have done to her emotionally let me stop right there. That's a, a common thing that white supremacists love telling each other that black folks ridicule other black folks for talking white. As if talking white means talking intelligent. That's something that white supremacists love telling each other. Hey, black folks be getting mad for at us for ta- or at other black people for talking white. Talking white means talking like a damn coon or a bedwench. It has nothing to do with intelligence. Let's be very clear. It has nothing to do with intelligence. But let me read the rest. It says, it's time to rethink our social stalemate. As an educator, I've made a point of studying the history behind some of the things that I was and wasn't taught throughout my education. For example, I've learned and taught our kids about the Constitution, our Republican form of government, and the genesis of history of our American political parties. We've also studied popular thought about slavery and racism versus what history says about these issues. Now, what the hell she mean by that? What the hell does she mean by that? They must, she must have lied to him, spread some more lies. But that's enough. That's all I can read of this. I, I, just this bullshit white supremacist logic. I can't. I can't deal no more. But right here, 
this woman right here gave you the blueprint on how they create coons that they adopt. They adopt coons and, well, they, they adopt black people. They don't adopt coons. They make coons. Let me be very clear. They adopt these poor children, get them over here, and create sleeper cells. So just imagine this girl, jet black girl out here in black society. These are the types of people that they hire at BuzzFeed. These are the type of people that they hire at The Root. These are the type of people that they hire at Ebony to represent black society. People who grew up around white supremacists or other coons who have nothing but vitriol towards black society, who hate black society. This is why when you see the root Ebony, Madame Noir, and these are supposed to be the voices of black society, everything is all about finding a zaddy, swirling, being allies with white lesbians in the gay community, getting a, eight ways to get a zaddy, and how niggas ain't shit, how straight black men are the problem, how straight black men are the white supremacists of black society. This is where that shit comes from, right there. This is how you create a blabbity black. And understand, I want sisters to know, Native American, Native Black American sisters, those bedwinters like that, they feel the same way about you as they feel about black men. There really is no camaraderie with you and them. Do you know the some of the things them white adopted mothers be telling them girls about black women? They really don't want you around no black woman. Because the sister, just like, remember in the article, the older black woman was trying to say, hey, what's up with those girls? You need to teach them. They don't, oh Lord, no. They don't want you around no other black women who ain't coons. They don't want you around other black women, period. Name, a, name another black woman you saw somebody like Candace Owens around. You don't see her around no other black women. Look at the Candace Owens of the world. You don't ever see her around no black women. They hate black Native American women more than they hate brothers. Because you competition. They don't want you, they don't want a pool of people competing for zaddy. You dig? And they're taught that, well, black American women are just ghetto. They're ghetto and unrefined and your own welfare and you like having babies. And you, you like your food stamp. That's what they're told about you, sisters. They're told that you're welfare mother, section eight whores, food stamp receipt. That's what they're told. So they stay away from you too. They go out of their way to not be associated with you. You understand? And the thing is, we got these people and they're hiding among us. That's why when you when you get around people, family, ask questions, find out people. That's when I'm when I'm around people, especially when I do media stuff, when I'm doing media interviews or when people want to do media stuff with me and they're black, I look into their background. And when I get into their background, I get an idea of how they're going to get down. Somebody brought up Jamila Lemieux in the chat room. For years, Jamila Lemieux has been spewing anti-black man hatred. And people were confused at where, where did that come from? Because she's always bragging about her black dad and her black family or whatever. But then I did research and we we outed the fact that her dad is what is somebody who we suspect of being a white man passing as black. And her dad was a cop out here terrorizing black folks in Chicago. So there it is right there. You can trace the root of some of that anti-black person hatred. This woman grew up with a man who could pass for white and many people think he actually is white. He's just fronting like he's black. You dig? Who and many people also think he was part of the Cointelpro program and this dude might be a damn fed. We know he's a cop. But we got to understand these sleeper cells are very dangerous. We got to ask questions. Find out people's background. Find out who's who. 
When people come around talking about they represent black society, find out who the hell they are. You dig? Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ladies and gentlemen, go to MinkSlide.com and get that Mink Slide vinyl album if you don't have it. Also, get your North Sentinel Island sweaters and t-shirts. Get that at HiddenColorsFilm.com and also get some other t-shirts at TariqElite.com. I will holler at you guys this Sunday on the Sunday broadcast. You guys be good.